In this video we're going to have a look at creating a new behavior. So I've got a project loaded that has a single character within it but no behaviors yet. So in order to create a behavior what I need to do is select the character and then the character property editor appears in the scratch pad. Here is a behaviors drop down and this contains a list of every d behavior defined in the behaviors folder of the project. Uh, I, this is a new project so I don't have any yet so I'm going to use this icon right here which is create new behavior. I'll click that and you can see it assigns a uh, new behavior to this character. The name chosen here is uh, auto-generated to be unique within the behaviors folder and it's given a .hkb extension. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this behavior. I'm going to right click on it in asset view and choose rename. I'm just going to call mine test. Okay, so with that created, we can now go about adding a state to this behavior. So first of all, what is a state? A state represents the way the character behaves at any one time in the game. So for instance, uh, example states are idling, walking, running, jumping, getting shot, getting back up, etc. They're all individual ways that the character behaves at, a, at one point in the game. So let me start and add a idle animation to this behavior. To do so I use the right click menus in graph view and I just cl right click in an open area and this menu pops up and there's you can see there's a variety of different ways to create states. I'm gonna choose the first one add states with clip nodes. This brings up the select animation dialog. This, this dialog is populated with all the animations in the animations folder of the project. In my case I'm gonna pick this one fight idle animation and say OK and the state is added. So in the graph view we see this rectangle this represents the state and the color of the rectangle indicates the type of node within the state. The node is the item that actually gives the state uh, its behavior. The way, it, the way the character behaves is determined by the node and for this case it's a clip node and we can see it here in the state editor as the child node. I can double click this and I'll be in the clip editor where I can edit the clip node. And you can see that this is a wrapper around the animation that we chose, which is right here. Now I'm going to double click that, and that will take us into the animation editor. And up here in the viewport, we can now uh, preview this animation. If I just click the play button here, you can see it's got the character idling. He's uh, in a sort of idle state, ready to fight but it just plays through one time. And you notice there's a number of properties shown in the animation editor, but they're all read-only. I can't change any of these. So to actually affect how the animation affects the character, you do that through the clip editor. Again, the clip is just a wrapper around that animation. And we'll take a look quickly at one of the properties of the, of the clip node, and that's the playback mode. Right now it's set to loop, but you can change it to single play, to just play once and stop or ping pong to play forward and then play in reverse and uh, repeat back and forth. We'll leave it at loop. And now let's to take a look at this in the viewport uh, we use the simulate button. So once an animation is a part of a clip um, you need to simulate it to see the effect. And we click this button and you can see the character is now looping over and over. If I press the stop button um, these playback controls are enabled and it has recorded that simulation into the cache and I can now use any of these controls to scrub the cache and look at it in forward and backwards. So the last thing I want to do is rename the state to give it a, a meaningful name. Uh, I'm going to call mine idle and that's the beginning of defining a behavior. In the next video, we're going to have a look at adding more states and transitions.